Hey, I gotta check my machine out here. I got something clunking in the front. morning here I'm heading out in the Pioneer 1000 but I'm not going very far as you can see I'm all loaded up because me Lynn Seth and Dan are heading to West Virginia gonna go ride some uh, trails in the Hatfield McCoy system with some uh, members of the Honda side-by-side -side club so the rest of the guys should be getting here pretty soon I'm gonna finish loading up the toy hauler I got everything all hooked up way So last night I already got everything pretty much hooked up here as you can see we got Seth's sport track in the bed of the pickup along with some fuel cans and of course a good supply of firewood and then here the toy hauler not taking the 1000 for this trip just taking the little mighty mouse he's all nestled in here good and snug in the toy hauler along with Lynn Suzuki LT400 it's all ready to go so I'm pretty much all packed up, ready to go. Just waiting on everyone else to get here. We're gonna try to hit the road by 9.30, which will put us at Ashland Resort where we're staying about four or five-ish, depending on how many pit stops we make. Hopefully the Duramax don't give us any problems this time. we're all loaded up getting ready to go kiddos are at a piano lesson so i'm waiting to say goodbye to them before we leave you guys all comfy back there yep you gotta keep me awake because i drive this six and a half hour drive that's right yeah and they're all gonna be sleeping but we'll check back in with you guys later <laughs> Shots. 
you see why this is a windy narrow road I'm glad my camper isn't any bigger or else I'd be nervous wreck right now it's fun to drive on I just don't know about with a 30 foot camper so pay attention to where you're at lesson learned in my case you will not be leaving and coming this way The road was narrow, the road was winding, but luckily we didn't run into any other traffic and we did eventually make it to Ashland Resort without any incidents. Now, Ashland Resort is kind of out there in the middle of nowhere and you think you might be going in the wrong place, but once you get there the facilities are really nice. As you can see they have cabins of all different kind of sizes to fit different budget levels from simple ones to more elaborate fancy ones and of course they have a abundance of RV hookups either pull throughs or back ends with all the hookups you could need and they even have nice little areas set up for primitive tent camping as you can see there just to the right of the screen there's a tent set up there they have a nice actually sand bed for putting your tents up on which makes it really nice if you're sleeping in the tent you don't have to worry yeah. about rocks roots you know that kind of stuff because you have that nice sand layer how much room are you going to want to get that stuff out of there how much room are you going to want to get that out And luckily, the 500 and Suzuki rode just fine in the back on the way down. Well guys, as you can see, it is dark because it's late, but we're here, we're all set up. It's after 9. We got a fire going outside here, gonna get us a little late dinner. I don't know how well my GoPro is gonna pick up. I can see then somewhat, but anyway. Sometimes I get a little bite to eat here and get some sleep tonight if I can keep them guys under control and keep their shenanigans under control. That's not, gonna happen. that's not gonna happen probably, but anyway. Tomorrow we'll hit the trail about nine about ten o'clock I guess with Shuglin and do some riding, see what kind of trails we can ride. Bring you guys along for the ride, so we'll see you in the morning. Now for the first day we had a pretty good sized group with a kind of a wide range of machines that went along here. There of course was my 500, Chuglin's 500, his brother had a Wolverine R spec there, we had a Pioneer 1000 tagging along with us, of course we had Seth on his little Honda 4 tracks, we had Lynn on his Suzuki 400, and we had a good old 660 Rhino tagged along with us on this trip. Now nobody was too anxious about breaking anything here our very first trip of our very first day. So for the main part of the beginning here we just stuck to the medium blue trails and just kind of took it easy, just this nice leisurely pace to try to get a feel for the trails and just enjoy the beautiful morning. Glenn's brother here that's leading the pack in his Wolverine R spec. And 
you might be thinking that the 708 that they put in those is a little undersized for a big side-by-side -side, but I tell you what that uh, R spec impressed me with the amount of get up and go it had of course when I'm in my 500 pretty much anything will impress me with the get up and go but I kept up with them pretty good I just there's a hop for whatever reason. How's my pace? Too fast? Too slow? Oh, it's fine for me. Yeah, I noticed that when you were on the pavement too. There was like a. Yeah, I thought it was just because you're in higher gear. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh bless you. So in hindsight, I probably should have stopped and checked my machine over a little bit closer. You'll see why as we continue and also considering that our first kind of mishap of the day happens here right after now nothing major as you'll see here we just kind of got onto the wrong track we actually kind of got onto one of the dirt bike tracks which wasn't a major mishap but it was kind of a uh, maybe a foreshadowing of things to come want to try it out hey, hey all right he's got a stick you got a stick in the back of your side by side up here said that was just kind of a, a little tiny oops but uh, then the real problems at least for me started soon thereafter
something going on with my machine. Check my machine out here. I got something clonking in the front. My axle. Yep. It's my axle. That's probably why I had to wobble. Get worse, Jason. Wow, well, here's the problem. Oh, shoot, that's popped out. Oh, it popped out. It popped out. So apparently their tanning clip in there came off. Oh. And that's popped out. Is that the one you were telling me about? You this, had the... yep. Yep, okay. it is. So that, that's what's going on with it. Get it at a different kind of pushes it yeah, in it far it. <laughs> in a yeah. wrong spot. I think it was. We need to like, <laughs> tip it up and then raise this. <laughs> So that or push this down more to Seth. get to... What if you drive it up on that rock right there? Lift it up. Can you guys lift it again? Brace yourself. Yeah, I'm going to push down, so... I've got weight I can use. <laughs> what you do? I'm going to use it. Put it tall ways. Jason, how old are you? 33, 34. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to be 60, and if I knew I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of my body. And those are some of the things I used to do. Well, Just put it on the frame, Jason. Yeah, we might have to find another one to put under it. Or do you want to try stacking it? We can try standing stand. it up. You ready? Yep. That's safe. That's in there. As long as you don't get. Well, guys, I put my new axle in, and for whatever reason, it didn't stay together. It's popped out, and so now it is wedged in there. So what I'm going to have to do is probably pull the tire off, pull the axle out, and just going to take it out for now, and uh, see if I can make it back to camp. I have some more tools at camp. See if we can figure out what's going on here with this. So I'm probably going to have to tear. The whole front end out. <laughs> How is it? Taking pictures? Videos. Filming. <laughs> yeah, you'll, this will be on YouTube. This will be on his YouTube channel. Oh, there you go. Actually, guys, uh, hey, Jason. Pleasure. I planned this on purpose so it'd have some exciting. <laughs> you needed some material, right? There you go. How's he liking it? He's just got to I got some huge wire ties, too, for tying up stuff. You say, I got. That pins that can come out of there, I'm not going to have room with that spacer on there, am I? Mm. Uh, I got it. I have to finagle the pin a little bit. Probably don't want to bend that too much. The other day. different size, isn't it? Yes, it is. Probably going to be a little soft. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, these are awfully big. Ah, uh, sinking. Go on. Put your foot in the ground. Oh, he does have it, but it looks he like he looks does. Like he has it. Not and you don't have a lot of room to twist those. Right to <laughs> Sorry about your... Uh, well, I owe someone... <sighs> thought I saw a crack in those. Was there a crack in them? I don't know. At least you know you put it on there tight. There oh, you go. See, 
That's the only thing with this. I don't think. Yeah. It just. There's not enough play. No. Uh, I'll leave this here. I'm going to run with Joe. Yep, it, that's what happened. It just bent it. Bent it. It, it, it bent it all right. Here, then hold that up. See, that's why I'm wondering if the snap ring is probably the one that was supposed to go on there and not that. And it, I mean, it's bent. bent and cut too. Yeah. Alright guys, so we got the axle all pulled apart and out here on the trail. What happened was a little retaining clip that holds the two pieces together kind of sheared off. Now the only problem we have now is I have my open diff here, which I can't run like that. I'm going to get dirt and crud in there. It's going to let all the diff fluid out. But we found out that the cap bottle of this small size Gatorade will fit right in that hole. So we're going to stick her in there. We're going to tape the crap out of it and hopefully that will get us back to camp. And we're all going to share a swig of this. Whoops. Just there you go, man. Oh. I don't even have to tape it. <laughs> that is very cold. Good. Good tape. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Now we'll just put MacGyver. You know, yeah. Title yeah. yeah. MacGyver. Oh, and this is a good Back stuff. Back when we had ATVs that military. run two, three pounds, because that was your suspension. Did you ever own one of them? Mm -mm. Oh, like an old Honda ATC 125? Your suspension was your tires. It just needs that. And you'd only run two to four pounds. Because mm -hmm. you run two to four. You get out in the woods, you puncture it, you find a stick bigger in the hole, and you chuck it in there. You can keep on riding as long as that stick stays in there. No uh, cheap duct tape here. This is a good heavy duty gorilla stuff. I'll um, tell you what, I've got all of that stuff. It's the real deal. Yeah. We use you this. Put it somewhere. It stays. We use this in the natural gas. Like if we ever had to drop our hoses in the brine water and stuff, duct tape within two days is letting loose. This stuff would last for months in that. Yeah, I bought that stuff at DG or whatever. You might have to hear about it. That stuff there is the real deal. We're just gonna tape the crap out of this guy because that's all covered in oil, so that's probably not gonna stick. Can you wrap it the whole way around? Uh, probably gonna have to. I wonder why it's not. I don't now. know why it's not now. There it goes. Did it break? No, there was a clip in there. Yeah, there's, oh. a, there's a clip. I wonder if you can... No, no. There's somewhere on the way in. Yeah, he I may have some. I don't know, Yamaha plays or something. I thought it was just ATV. Yeah, some nut. Yeah. Well, I can see what I'm looking for. I'm a castle nut. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I see yeah, more juice. I've been by it on the trail, but I don't know how to get there. Back to business. Now hopefully we can get to the road, get back to camp. I can get an axle water and it'll be here tomorrow. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of an uneventful trip for me. I know. That's going to stink. Here's what I'm thinking. So we got everything band-aid back together well enough to get me back to camp where I could look stuff over a little better. And at this point I figured the best way to go would be keep going in the direction that we were going which would bring me out to a hard paved road and then I'd have an easier ride back in and that would actually be shorter than trying to backtrack what we already came. So I was hoping I wouldn't run into a lot of deep mud or any major rock climbing and stuff. We ran into a little bit here and there, but for the most part I was able to keep that side of my differential up, out, and dry because the last thing I wanted to do was get a bunch of mud and dirt to make its way through the tape and into my differential and cost more costly repairs in the future or whenever I got home.
still better than I didn't go through it probably. Yeah, it didn't even go to the middle of the grip. And it was a little bit more tricky than yeah, what I was hoping for back. with my pioneer in the shape it was, but we did eventually make it back here to an opening which led right to the dirt yeah, I'm just gonna get road, which deep. led to a paved road, and then I was good to go to make my way back to camp. Check out, yeah, give a quick look, see. Oh, we're in good shape. Good shape. Well, we made it all back safe and sound to the camp. And actually, if you guys can see here, our little tape job did a pretty good job just keeping everything dry. Unfortunately, the closest uh, Honda dealer is two hours away. Even more unfortunately is they have no axles. So I'm skunked. They can't, out here in the boonies where we are, overnight delivery is non-existent. So it'd be sometime Saturday afternoon before I even got an axle, which is, uh, we're leaving Sunday, so my plan for that is to tape the crap out of it and try to stay out of the mud and water as best as I can because I'm not going to be here and not enjoy some riding. And to add insult to injury, we got back to the campsite and we had a little bit of a flood here. Our outside shower sprung a hole here and was pretty much dumping all of our water onto the ground. So I'm just going to cut it, plug it, Hose clamp it, and that'll be good. So, we'll see how the rest of the day goes. Murphy's Law says things happen in three, right? Well, there's two, so we should be good if we have one more, but let's hope we don't have one more. Yeah, we're gonna take this side. Mountain Riders is brought to you in part by the following. The Honda Side-by-Side -side Club, because who knows the machines better than the owners that use them every day. Walker Evans Racing, when the path requires more than just ordinary, head on over to walkerevansracing.com. Torque Walker from Torque Masters Industries, when you want to explore the unexplored, head on over to torquemasters.com and by my gracious supporters on Patreon.